Hey y'all, my name is Mick. Thank you so much for watching this commentary paint. If you'd rather just watch the speed paint version, I will put a link in the description and an eye in the sky right now. I'm back, babes. I'm so excited about the prospect of being able to make commentary paints again. This is so exciting. So, for those who didn't watch my 100 color palette challenge videos or who don't follow me on social media and are just generally out of the loop, my computer has been busted. It's still pretty bad. I've had this computer for oh my goodness, six years now, I think, and it's never been a good computer, but apart from a large chunk of last year, it has been functional, and then suddenly, it wasn't. So I couldn't edit any commentary paints, and after a little while, I stopped being able to use my art programs as well. So I haven't been able to do digital art since the last time I uploaded a video to this channel. But I think I fixed it, hopefully. And I'm so happy to be back at it again at the Krispy Kreme. I really do love making these videos, and there has been a hole in my life for the last couple of weeks where commentary paints should reside. So before I get into the main topic of this video, I just wanted to briefly touch on what is being drawn in the background because I'm going to relate it to my topic later. This is an art trade that I did with Halo Cat on DeviantArt. That's Halo-Cat. They drew my friend Lilith's OC, and I drew this OC of theirs named Farsi. I, like, never draw animals, and those who have read the terms and service of my commissions know that I explicitly forbid commissioning animals. So when the prospect of an art trade came up with someone who only had animal OCs and wanted one of them drawn, I was not stoked. But I have been in a mood recently where I have only wanted to draw things that are blue with some sort of glowing aspect and a lot of dots, which you'll see in my next 100 color palette challenge video, so I became stoked when I saw that this was one of their OCs. Definitely suits my current mood. So thank you for the art trade, Halo Cat. It was a lot of fun. Now, to get into the main topic of my video, stop publicly insulting your art. This is a lot looser than my typical commentary paint, but you know, dust in the rust off. So. <laughs> This is something that I used to be so guilty of, and I know how tempting it can be, but you need to stop doing it. And I will explain why. I don't know every single person's individual reasons for doing this, but I know that I would insult my art because I thought that if I said what was wrong with it first, then no one would insult it. And in reality, that is just not the case. By publicly insulting my art and pointing out flaws in my art, I was encouraging people to follow my lead. I know that it can be really frightening to put your art online because there are so many stories about people who did and were bullied off of the internet, but the solution is not to bully yourself first. In my experience, people who insult your art just to be mean and insulting are way more likely to insult your art if you say what's wrong with a piece, because those people typically don't spend very long looking at your art and they might not spot the problems that you spotted during the hours or however long it took to draw that you were staring at this piece. But by listing out the problems with your art, you are essentially putting up a blinking neon sign that says, Hey, this is what I'm insecure about. If you're someone who preys on people's insecurities, this will work on me. So yeah, of course people who want to insult you and want to hurt your feelings are going to do that because you've just given them a cheat sheet. On the other hand, people who want to help you improve aren't going to reach out to you. The type of people who go around giving artists advice on how they can improve are going to see that you're cognizant of your shortcomings and are going to assume that you're working to improve that aspect of your art and will move on. And hopefully you are working to improve, but those people often give genuinely good advice that you might not have thought of before. So by insulting your art, you are inviting in people who want to hurt you and pushing away people who want to help. At least that's what my experience has been like and the experience of people I've talked to about this. Another reason to not insult your art is for marketing purposes. If you take commissions or want to in the future, you should be treating your art like a business. And it's bad business practice to insult your product. Like, imagine if Steve Jobs or Tim Cook or whoever's doing it now came out on stage to unveil the new iPhone and was like, now I know that the screen quality is really bad, but no, Tim Cook wouldn't say that because Tim Cook would immediately lose his job. The shareholders would take him out before he could even finish his presentation. No, Tim Cook's going to talk the product up and make it sound like the best thing in the world so that people want to buy it. Your art is your product, and anyone who sees your art becomes a potential customer. By talking shit about your art, you are telling potential clients that your product isn't worth buying. It's unprofessional, and if you ever want to sell your art, you need to cut that shit out. Now, before someone tells me I'm wrong, because there are scenarios where it's okay to talk shit about your art, just hush. I'm getting into it. I don't think there are very many scenarios where you should point out flaws in your art, 
there's maybe one where I think you should always do it and a couple where you don't have to, but sometimes it's okay. For example, if someone gives you genuine critique and advice where they point out what's wrong and then tell you how to fix it, I think that it's okay to say something along the lines of, yes, I've noticed this and I've been working to improve it. Thank you for the advice. Because you are publicly acknowledging a flaw, but you didn't bring it up. Someone else did. And you are coupling it with saying that you're working on fixing it. Now, you don't have to agree with them. You can just say thank you without the whole I've noticed it too part. By just saying thank you, you're not agreeing with the person critiquing you, but you're not disagreeing either. But I think that every so often it's okay to agree, as long as you can say that you're working on it. Don't just say, yeah, I've noticed it too, but I don't think I'll ever be able to fix it. Struggle. That's bad business practice again. But as long as you can point out how you've been working on it or will work on it in the near future, it's fine to agree with someone else's statement. I think in general, you should treat it like a job interview. Make yourself seem like the best candidate. Don't go around advertising your flaws. You want to seem like a good person to buy art from. Now, you might have a real job interview as an artist, either because you want to work in the industry or a client needs an artist for a long-term project and they want to weigh their options. You may have to do an honest-to-goodness art job interview, and that is the only scenario in which I think you should talk about your flaws. Only if the interviewer asks, of course. It would be wild if you rolled up like, Hey, what's up? My name is Mick Fielding. Thank you so much for considering me for this position. Before you ask any questions, though, here's a list of things that I'm bad at. That's wild. Don't do it. But if they ask the question, you know, what's your biggest weakness? Have one thing prepared to answer. I don't know that this series is mostly art advice, but here's some job interview advice. Don't do that thing where you say a strength but pretend that it's a weakness. That's not a weakness, and everyone knows the game now. That's such a 90s way of answering the question. You're not even answering the question because you didn't say a weakness. Here's how you answer the question. Number one, say an actual weakness. Don't avoid the question. Trust me, the person interviewing you is fucking sick of it. If they ask you a question, it's because they want to know the answer, not because they want to hear you weasel your way out of it unless you're a salesman. Number two, don't say a weakness that is integral to the job that you're applying for. If you're applying to be a veterinarian, don't say that your biggest weakness is that you're afraid of animals. You kind of need to be okay around animals to be a vet. You ain't getting the job. Pick a flaw that isn't something you'll be using every day in this job. Number three, after saying your biggest weakness, say what you've been doing to fix it. If your biggest weakness is a lack of communication skills, say that you're taking a speech class at the local community college or something. Obviously, only say it if it's true, don't be a liar liar pants on fire. But by saying what you're doing to improve, you look like someone who can solve a problem, because you're giving an example of a problem that you're currently solving. Okay, earlier I said I would tie this piece of art into what I was talking about, and I wanted to do so by giving an example of when you should never point out flaws in your art. So I got a notification on DeviantArt that someone had showed my art in a comment that they left on another person's piece. Um, for those who don't know, on DeviantArt you can include images in your comments and if you click on the image you will be brought to the original page for that piece and if it's not your art, the person who drew it will be notified that you used it. So being curious, I went and I checked out the comment thread that it was from and I was blown away to the point that I had to make this video. So it starts out, innocently enough, a commenter saw a piece of art and said that it looks great, but that the shading and anatomy could use a little work. They finished with another compliment, it was a typical compliment sandwich, very vague and no advice, but there are good intentions in there. The artist then responded with, thank you, I do indeed suck, thank you again, which is a wild thing to respond with, I know I call too many things wild, but what the fuck is that response? That is, while not pointing out a specific flaw in the art, a broadcasting of one's insecurities for the whole world to see. Luckily, they were talking to someone who was nice, but that still could have led to being insulted by some less than well-meaning folk. A couple comments down the thread, the original commenter goes into what specifically is off about the anatomy and how to fix it, but the artist continues with the whole I suck at art mentality in every single comment. They only vaguely defend themselves when they have every reason to because this commenter is bringing up some busted ass things that don't need to be fixed and is giving some bad advice and the artist seems to recognize that it's bad advice but isn't defending themselves. Hey, artist, all artists. Don't fucking do this. If someone is giving you bad advice and you know it's bad advice, don't just sit there and take it. If someone says your shading is bad and you don't use cell shading and they quote, much prefer cell shading as it makes the final result looks closer to anime, fucking tell them that anime isn't the be all end all of good art and that you don't have to do cell shading. This artist seems to prefer soft shading, but they won't stick up for themselves completely and instead they're choosing to repeatedly say that they suck to someone that's trying to help them. <sighs> 
At a different point in this comment thread, the commenter has to try and reassure the artist that their art doesn't suck by saying that it still looks hot. This is where my art comes into play, because the artist says it looks like shit compared to this piece, and then links to my art, which infuriates me, because someone insulting their own art upsets me in a way where I just want to gently guide them to the edge of the room and explain to them why they shouldn't talk shit about themselves, and someone insulting their art after receiving a compliment or a critique makes me want to take their face in my hands and say, hey, dumbass, take the fucking compliment. But someone insulting their art while trying to compliment another artist, especially if that artist is me, makes me want to kick them with a boot made out of self-confidence. Those are the two scenarios in which I think you should never insult your own art. When you're receiving a compliment or a critique, and when you're giving a compliment or a critique. Because it's completely possible to do those things without insulting your own art. And insulting your own art while doing them makes the experience worse for everyone. If every time someone compliments you, you say, No, that's not true. I suck. No one is going to want to compliment you, because every compliment turns into a stopping whatever it is they were doing to make you feel better and reassure you that you don't suck, and that's why they were complimenting you. No one wants to do that. They just want to say that you're good at art and move on with their life, only thinking about it again when they receive a notification that you responded with a thank you or some other positive acknowledgement. Insulting yourself after receiving a compliment is unprofessional and makes people feel like they have to coddle you like a small child crying about losing a game. And don't insult yourself while complimenting others! The whole point of a compliment is to make the person you're complimenting feel good, and it doesn't make people feel good to hear you bully yourself. Like, I'm self-obsessed, and I need everything to be about me all the time, but when you insult yourself while complimenting me, suddenly everything's about you, and I hate it. That's a joke, but also, it's not. <laughs> really though, when you insult yourself inside of a compliment, the person you're complimenting can no longer just say thank you and appreciate the nice message. Again, they have to stop and make sure that you feel good, which is the opposite of what a compliment's about. Personally, having someone insult themselves makes me feel worse than getting no compliment at all. If your goal is to make an artist you like feel good with one of those your art is so much better than mine, I'll never be as good as you type comments, then honestly, just hush, because you're not doing it. If your goal is to make an artist feel bad for you, then congratulations, you did it. No one wants to hear it. Sorry I'm so angry about this, but fuck off. <laughs> I'm gonna end this video with this. No one is 100% proud of their art. Everyone is at least a little bit insecure. But if you think that these great artists that you admire are entirely proud of their work, the reason you think that is that they don't walk around bad-mouthing their work. And you shouldn't either. It doesn't do you any good. I got really worked up in this video. I'm not actually angry about people insulting themselves, and I'm not angry about the person's comment using my art to degrade themselves. It just makes me sad, really. Seeing these comments really brings me down because I used to feel the same way, and it made me sad back then. It will make you feel better to stop. That's my final reason to not talk shit about your own art. It'll make you feel better, both about your own art specifically and just in general. You'll feel better because the actual act of putting those thoughts out there for everyone to see makes those feelings stronger. That's why you'll hear people recommend saying positive mantras and saying positive thoughts out loud. It makes you believe them. And it works the same way with negative thoughts. You're reinforcing these negative thoughts that you have in your head and you should stop. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This was a different video, but I still enjoyed making it and I'm so excited to get back into making weekly videos. Hopefully my computer continues to work. Talk to y'all again soon. Bye!